Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to a special video. It's me, Lady Ada, here at the Adafruit headquarters. With me is Zach Super Supala from Particle. Hello. I'm wearing my Particle shirt today. He's not. That's okay. I'm representing. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you're in town for whatever <laughs> uh, amazing Hanging reason. out in New York, yeah. You're in New York. And um, since you're here, part of the deal is um, we're making you go on video. All right. Against your will. No, no, you love being on video. Love you video. Love video. So, okay, so tell us about, if people who don't know Particle, what are you, what's Particle? Yeah, so Particle is a company that helps people make IoT products. So we have a whole bunch of development kits for prototyping IoT things that are connected via Wi-Fi, cellular, Bluetooth, or mesh. Mm. Uh, and development kits that you can use for prototyping. We have connectivity modules that companies use to uh, bring products to market. And so you can use us for prototyping all the way through production grade IoT platform to support big old enterprise IoT kinds of things. So can makers use it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Can engineers or companies use it? Hundred percent. Can a business base their yes business? You know, it's like oh, I have a sh shrimp farm and I want to yes digitize my shrimp farm to keep track of my shrimps. They that can sounds use great. Particle. We can keep track of all of the shrimp. Okay, great. Well, yeah. they're delicious. Um, <laughs> okay, so. Um, some people probably will, like they're like they have a good idea now of the abstract, but I thought maybe we could go to the overhead and you can mm. actually show what some of what like what is an yeah, IoT yeah. dev kit. Okay, so let's go to the overhead. All right, and so you can, we you have, can see a preview here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, okay, so over here on the right, we're going to talk about the boron. So we just did our third. We launched our third generation hardware, which is all feather form factor, which is mm. awesome. Uh, and on the right here, you have the Boron. So the Boron is our cellular connected product. And so this has an LTE CAT M1 connection. What's CAT M1? CAT M1 is a new form of LTE that's designed for IoT products. So in some countries, we're activating CAT M1. In other places, we're using narrowband IoT. Eventually, yeah. probably both of them will be everywhere. It's in progress. It's one of those like 2G, 3G, and now it's like 4, 5, yeah. mystery. but this is the latest. This is the new stuff. The new stuff. So forward thinking. Yes. No 2G here. This is no, 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 only no. the future. 2G okay. and 3G are going away at different rates in different parts of the world. So what's right for you depends on where you are. But LTE is the future, so LTE is good. Also, it sounds the coolest. LTE. Yes. Lit. Long, okay. long term evolution. Is that what it stands for? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody has ever known that. Though. Well, see, oh, I a, learned something and maybe they learned something. And it was supposed to be that, that was, we were going to be done naming things and just say long term evolution forever. It's it'll like, be it's LTE. It's like modernism and it's like postmodernism. It's like, right. well, what are you doing that? Well, then somebody was like, oh, then 5G. Okay. So it's, it didn't last that long. Okay, so let's, let's keep looking. Okay. So you get the cellular one and then. All right, um, you got cellular. There's a missing one. There's, There's a missing the one, which is the Argon, which is Wi-Fi connected. That uses an ESP32 for Wi-Fi connectivity. And then the one here on the left is the Xenon, which is for mesh networking. So basically, the Boron and the Xenon... Whoa, look at the bottom. Oh, yeah, okay. we have stuff on the bottom, too. Those are fancy. So Actually, the Xenon no, is on the left. The Xenon flat. is blank on the, on the bottom. Yeah. The Boron has even more goodies on the bottom. Wow. Because cellular is a whole bunch of stuff. And then did you guys design your own hardware? Did you buy something off the shelf and then just put your logo on it? We, des we designed it. We, uh, well, I should say that this is a little bit of both. So under the hood here, the, the sticker is covering an off the shelf module. Okay. But then on the bottom, that's ours. And yeah. the one on the Xenon is ours. And so we basically mix and match whatever is out in the market and what we need to make ourselves so we can have certified products because in order to do FCC certifications, we have to wrap PTCRB, tin PTCRB, like yes. you don't even know what that is. And then, you're, oh, then yeah. you get into it and you're like, oh my goodness. PTCRB, we cover PTCRB. You don't have to know what PTCRB is. You don't is. know what it is, you never have to you find out. You don't want to know what it is. Terrible. We took care of it already. And, and so, so what cellular, for the cellular stuff that's interesting, what networks can you use it with? Is it like Verizon, AT&T? So it depends where you are in the world. In the U.S., uh, uh, it's AT&T first, and it, you, the, we'll often, you know, sort of backfold to other carriers. Uh, and then internationally, it's we have a list on our website, so it depends yeah. on what country you're in. But, but it's yeah. worldwide. Yeah. And do people use this worldwide? All yeah, like absolutely. I mean, the, the, so I should say the M1 is... Uh, U.S. only US for M1. now yeah. because M1 is, is live M1 mostly is really here. New. It's actually interesting. They went backwards. Like M4 is out everywhere, yeah. but M1. So is, I think M1. So M1 is lower power. Yes, but it was like I think they ran out of numbers because. This is like 1.5. It right? used to be like the numbers were going up. LTE Cat 4, Cat 6, like yeah. up meant more bandwidth. Yeah. Right. So like you want to stream 4K. You need VR six. into your eyeballs. You need yeah. like the highest number that you can yeah, get. Yeah. Cat 7, Cat 8. Yeah. And then they were like, well, for IoT, we want to go the other way. 
so they did cat one and then cat zero, and then they were at zero. And now, and now so, what? And oh, so no. M one is like negative one, and narrow band is like negative, negative two. two. Yeah. That's how, how that's how I think about it. And then they're they're they already have NB two, like specked out. They're, so it's gonna be negative. Okay. Wow. We're basically mind. like LTE will go higher bandwidth for your 4K VR, and lower bandwidth for your IoT stuff. Okay, so people have these boards, and so can you give some examples of what your clients or customers are using yeah. this for? Yeah, so a lot of different things. We have companies who use us for, you know, what I would generally describe as like industrial widgets. So okay. we have companies using us for um, uh, filtration systems in factories. We have customers using us for, to connect air conditioners to, for service and maintenance. Okay, so what, how does the air conditioner, so everyone's got an air conditioner, so yeah. why would you want to have the internet in your air conditioner? Well, because <laughs> the thing about air Sell conditioners, <laughs> okay, the thing about air conditioners is that they break. That's absolutely true. And if you think about an air conditioner, the part we interact with is the thermostat. Yeah. And then there's the other part behind it, which is the, the actual air conditioner. And the air conditioner, yeah. And like, when the air conditioner breaks, it's the thing behind it that broke. Yeah. The thermostat doesn't know why it broke. That's right. And so if your air conditioner breaks, you call an HVAC person. Hey, Maytag and man. Yeah, c okay. like come out and fix it. And then they have to diagnose it and repair it. But they don't actually know why it's broken when you call. No. So. And then they're like, okay, like look for the error code, but there's no error code. There's not even a display. There's right. only like one knob. Right. So we have a customer called Alert Labs. Uh, it's part of Watsco, which is a big HVAC distributor. And they uh, built a remote monitoring system called Sentry. That allows you to monitor. That allows uh, that allows you to monitor the state of the air conditioner, so you can figure out if it's breaking, if it's broken, if is it's it too breaking. hot, is it too cold? Yeah. Is it in the middle? Okay. So, so we so like air conditioners. We have hot tubs, uh, wow. jacuzzi, the largest manufacturer of hot tubs in the world, I think. They have these modules. They have a product called the Smart Tub, which is a connected hot tub that's powered by particles. I think there's a movie about that, right? About the, the, the hot that, tub? That's like the time machine. Oh, the hot tub yeah, time yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they travel through time yet. Not yet. But that's, that's maybe a firmware update. That's yeah. <laughs> you, got the, well, you have to do the particle tachyon, right? The tachyon pulse. I have been trying to name every product the tachyon, and I keep getting shot down. Okay, well, I'm on your side it's with not, this one. Yeah, it's the particle from the future. Well, you could do that for April 1st. I... For me, all of the products are named Tachyon until they actually become reality, True. and then they get a different True. name. True. Okay. Very Star Trek. Okay. Sorry. So, <laughs> so, so, so monitoring, <laughs> sending data online, and yes. then you have the service that goes with the hardware. Yep. And tell me a little bit about that. How does yeah. that? How do you get the data from these to? Do you get the data now? How do you do that? So, if you plug one of these in, yeah. and I'll use the Boron as an example. If you plug it in, you give it power. Um, it has one of our SIM cards in it, and you, it connects to I'll, our you, cloud service. Do you want to show the bottom again Yo, so you can see where that yeah. SIM card goes? Yeah. So there's a SIM card. Actually, our, we, we, we have a, a, a embedded SIM card that's already on there. Oh. Uh, so, uh, so you don't actually have to add a SIM. You can add a SIM if you want to add your own so there's SIM. There's a slot if you want like a dual SIM. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's already, uh, it already has its own SIM. Weird. I know. That's okay. the future. That's tachyons. The future is these cards are very silly things that they we invented. They are a little bit silly because most people are like they never they put it in once they never take it and out. It's just a tiny microcontroller that's in that thing yeah, anyway. Yeah, so it's bonded directly. Yeah. Okay, so you especially for industrial because it moves around in yeah, and it gets and loose, so it gets, pops yeah, out. Yeah, Terrible. Yeah, that sucks. Okay. So, so you plug this thing in. It uses our SIM card and it connects to our cloud service, and so you can connect to all these devices through an API. So you don't have to write all the software that actually does you know, all the connectivity stuff, it's all built in. And you can also then reprogram the devices over the air from either our web IDE or through our new desktop IDE, which is called Workbench, which is based on Microsoft VS Code. And this is all like totally insecure and like not encrypted, right? We secure everything. Security is awesome. Uh, and everything end to end is secure and encrypted. So only you can access it, and anyone you give access to through so nobody, tokens. Nobody so can hack so your hot tub. OK, exactly. so let's. Um, Let's show for another couple of minutes. Um, we're going to wrap up soon. But so you moved to the Feather format. Yes. We love and Feather. You love Feather. So I actually don't know how this happened. All I just got an email and said, hey, like, how can we use the Feather format? Do you have a spec? And I was like, I have to write a spec. And I go to spec and I sent it. Yeah. And then like three months later, they were like, you're like, here, it's done. <laughs> what? So can you like really quickly give me the, the background? Yes. What, what were you, why did you move to a different form factor? So when we, when we first started making our development kits, the Spark Core way back in the day, and then the Photon, and then the Electron, we wanted something small, and we wanted something breadboardable, 
but what was available at the time didn't quite fit what we needed. And in particular, I remember it was the Arduino Pro Micro was like the thing that we wanted to design around, but it was too narrow to fit Wi-Fi modules and cellular modems. And so we designed something a little bigger, and then we had to go bigger again for the electron because the, yeah, cause the it was, cause cellular nice. stuff is always big. And But we never really wanted to create our own design because we we want to participate in an ecosystem. We want to be doing something where there's a bunch of accessories and stuff works and it's generally compatible, but there just wasn't anything in this kind of form factor that like was make, that way. You make hardware, but you're not interested in being like the hardware leader. You don't be a hardware like leader and generator. Right. You're like, you want to work with everybody else because your big thing is the secure cloud. Yes, exactly. And so for instance, with Featherwings, like what we love is that there are a whole bunch of different Featherwings that connect different Sensors and controllers and so on and so forth. The ink feather wing how that many, just came how out. How many do you have these days? We have like a hundred feather wings. There you so go. We've got OLEDs and. I mean, last time I was here, I think it was like fifty. So. Yeah, I know. We came up with a bunch of joysticks and relays. Maybe we could just pop them on. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Maybe just like, relay. Should I put this? Should I put this under? This yeah, thing? you can just okay, put it under. Let's do that. These relays. are all prototypes, so they're kind of a weird color. So they're like gigantic relays okay. and. Joysticks. This is a joystick. For playing. This is a oh, MP. MP3. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's fun. This is MP3 decoding. Ethernet. We're out of room. Oh, you can just pop one after, yeah. They're so small and yeah. Little LED displays. <laughs> I'll just pass them through. Left or right. All sorts of things. Oh, Charlie, Charlie, uh, Charlie, Plex, Charlie Wing, and then yeah. The e, the e ink, which I think Love would be a really ink. good fit, fit for the NRF5284. Yeah. Power oh, yeah, all our stuff is NRF5284 based. GPS. So, so you, you're, cool. all this stuff works with. So, this is great. All of it works with particle, which is exactly what we want because we. Uh, you know, in the past, we created a couple of shields for yeah. our products, but you guys have built a huge ecosystem around Feather, which we love because we get to, you know, play in that uh, in that ecosystem. I'm so excited for when you send us the licensing check too. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. No, just we'll kidding. Have to, we'll have to talk to the accounting team. There's about, no licensing. It's free. It's a free spec. <laughs> oh, this is messing with you. That's another thing. You're like, hey, can we use it? And I said, go it's great. for it. It's and I will commend you for designing something that really thinks about compatibility because one of the problems with all of these different designs that we've used in the past is it's tough to maintain compatibility so that you can actually guarantee that all the wings work with all the feathers and yeah. you, you did a really good job of figuring out like what are the rules you, you have you to You can't follow. always plug every feather in but every feather will work with every board. Which is great. At least one. And then of course if you want like if you want like a TFT and OLED, yeah, you're gonna have like conflicting pins, but right. you can always have like sensors and a display. Right. But that's really hard to get right, and that's I think one of the great things in, about the design. Besides the fact that you built a thing and you designed a bunch of stuff for it, which yeah. we love. Yay. You also designed it well, and so stuff works, which is also great. So it's working out for you. That's awesome. Okay, and good. these I was like if you showed up and you're like, it's terrible. I like think the okay. The fact that we have moved from a world I'm gonna can I borrow this? Yeah, sure. Can I use this? Okay. The fact that we have moved from a world where Okay, let me show this overhead again. Yeah. Okay. Where we this used new, to. This is by the way a secret. It's not was, like I, was I not supposed to? No, it's uh, funny. No, uh, it on purpose. Publicize it's, it. There it's we go. The quad feather wing. <laughs> <laughs> how how far are you gonna go? I don't know. I can't. Well, we get the tachyons coming. <laughs> so the Your applicator. I the thing I really never got about like the shield form factor was that you stack them and you end up with these silly like tow, huge. Tow, leaning tower of Pisa designs. <laughs> but like that's not really what you After want. After two, it gets tough. It gets. No, what's funny is we had. Um, that's a quick story. We'll wrap yeah, up. Yeah. At MIT, we had that problem. We had like people who would make modular systems, but like after four, like nothing is structurally. Right. Safe. Nobody's <laughs> making electronics that are taller than they are wide. I That's know, not a good. It's, it's true. Design. So I like the side by side. Love the side by side because this actually like you can fit it in a box, and then if you add one more, you fit it in a bigger box, yeah. and so on and so forth. Boxes come in all shapes and sizes, yeah. but are usually flat. <laughs> They're usually thin and flat. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's great. Right now. And then. Is there anything coming out that you want to tell people about? Like, mm. hey, here's a thing we're doing. Maybe get people excited. Yes. So we are launching soon our SOMs. Um, and so basically what? everyone, system on modules. Oh, system Systems on modules. Systems on module, system I suppose, if we're pluralizing correctly. Yeah. Uh, so every one of our development kits uh, will have a SOM that pairs with it, which is the uh, design that will uh, that will work, that is designed for 
a mass manufactured product. Oh, so you're going to pick and place these. They yes. come on a tray. Yes. And they, because like, these are cute, but they're like. They're not actually pick and place. They're M2 form factors. So they have a plug. Oh, the little slots. And then you screw it in. Uh, that's okay. I should have brought like some. A, I don't have my like props. Like a PCCA sort of thing. Yeah. Like I'll yeah. send you a picture so you can like put okay. it up in the, in the thing. But that way, uh, when you have, when you, when you slide it in that way, it's a really robust design. And so it, it's industrial grade. Um, and that means that you can actually deliver a real product with it, but it works exactly the same as the development kits that are in the Featherwing form factor. I'm so a little bit uh, just w w w yeah. relatedly, it's a little bit like the Raspberry Pi compute modules that yeah. people are used to. Yeah. It's like the Raspberry Pi is this huge chunky thing, but then if you're like you want to use it in a product, right. you're like it's just too big. Right. So they made a version that's a SIM slot. It's exactly. Just like, same it's idea. A, I think common the common thing that I've seen. You know, the overall I think shtick that we're you know that we're trying to get right with our designs and uh, is that. We really want to make it easy for prototyping, and we want to make it easy to create a real product. Yeah. And we want to make the transition between the two as seamless as possible. Okay. And so having a dev kit that's great as a dev kit and designs something a module. Something for like 50 pieces. Yeah. And then something for 500 pieces. Yes, exactly. So 550, and then, 500. And they work the same, so when you move from one to the other, nothing changes. That's what we're going for. That's amazing. Well, uh, where can people go to get these modules and more info? Go to www.particle.io particle. and check out our stuff. Yeah, <laughs> All right, exactly. If you forget you. how particle spelled, you know. Uh, just for <laughs> tachyons. Okay, thank you for coming by, Zach. It was awesome having you. Thanks and for having uh, me. We love these particle feathers. They're awesome, yeah. especially the argon. It's our favorite. Uh, so check out particle.io. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>